Welcome to Electron Line. To help us in how we implement these eight steps to solve a max min problem, we're going to do an easy example. There will be plenty more difficult examples coming afterwards. But here the problem reads, construct a rectangle with a perimeter of 48 centimeters that contains the largest area. So first they tell us draw a picture. So we'll draw a picture of a rectangle. Rectangle has width and length, and they tell us that the perimeter is 48 centimeters, and then of course we need to find the maximum area. All right, so that's step one. We draw a picture of what the problem tells us to do. Next, we determine what is maximized or minimized. Now in this problem, that's easy to determine. They tell us we want a rectangle that contains the largest area, which means Point number two, A is maximized. Once we determine that the area here is maximized, now we need to write an equation that tells us that the area equals the other variables, some function of the other variables. So in this case, since we know that the area is equal to the length times the width of a rectangle, we can write area equals length times width. Now we realize that it now a function of two variables, which we cannot take the derivative of that, so we need to eliminate one of the two variables. To do that, we need to determine the constraint of the problem. The constraint is there's some limitation, some other piece of information that limits how big the length and the width can be. And here we can see that they tell us that the perimeter is equal to 48 centimeters, so that would be our constraint. The perimeter, so 4, the perimeter is equal to 48 centimeters, and of course we know that the perimeter is equal to twice the length plus twice the width. So we're going to take this information and use it to eliminate one of our variables. That's step number 5. We're going to use the constraint to eliminate all the unknown variables, all but one. So let's get rid of L or W, doesn't matter. Okay, now we're going to solve for L. L equals 24 minus W, and we're going to substitute that into our equation here to eliminate one of our variables. When we do that, we get the following equation. We get uh, A is equal to L, instead of L we write 24 minus W, times W, or A, the area, equals 24W minus W squared. So now we have the area as a function of just a single variable. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative now of that function and set that equal to zero. So a prime, in terms of w, is 24 minus 2w, and then we're going to set a prime equal to zero, which means we're going to set that equal to 24 minus 2w. Of course, we do that so we can now solve for the unknown variable w. So that is now step number six. Step number seven, once we set the derivative equal to zero, we're now going to solve for the unknown. First of all, we can divide both sides by two, so we get zero is equal to 12 minus w, or w is equal to 12. And that tells us what the unknown w is, so the width needs to be 12. And once we know the width, we can now also solve for the length, because we simply have to substitute that in for w. So 7 is we're solving for the unknown variable, and sometimes we have to solve for the other unknown variable, so L is equal to 24 minus 12, or L is equal to 12 as well. Right away we can realize now that the largest area is obtained in a rectangle when the width actually equals the length, which means when the rectangle is a square. Finally, number 8, we can check our answer. What we're going to do is we're going to plug our answers w and l back in the original constraint. Here we know that the perimeter must be twice the length plus twice the width and add up to 48 centimeters. So twice 12 is 24 plus 2 times 12 is 24 again. 24 plus 24 indeed equals 48 and so we verified that yes the answers do make sense and so that would be step number 8. The perimeter is going to be 2 times 12 for the, for the length plus 2 times 12 for the width, and yes indeed, it does add up to 
48, in this case, 48 centimeters. So that's how we want to do all of these types of problems. If you don't follow the strict regimen, step-by-step -step process, quite often we end up getting off on some tangent and all of a sudden you just can't get the answer, you can't figure out the problem. It's really a good idea to very systematically go through the process like this. Step one, we draw a picture. Step two, we determine what's being maximized. Once we determine that, we write an equation in terms of all the unknown variables for the variable that we're trying to maximize or minimize. Step four, we find a constraint. Step five, we use the constraint to eliminate one of the variables. Once we've eliminated one or sometimes more than one of the variables because we only end up with one variable, we now have a function that's uh, a function of just one variable and now we can take the derivative of that. Once we take the derivative, we set the derivative equal to zero, then we solve for the unknown variable, and then we use that information to solve for all the other unknown variables, and finally, do a quick check to make sure the answers do make sense. And that's how it's done.